you write blogs, you need images. You start a new company, you need logos to be designed. You need marketing material. You're creating a tutorial, a video lecture. You need graphics that make your explanations come to life. Image generation is an essential use case. And with the release of models like Flux, we have solved this problem to a great extent. Hugging Face is filled with fine-tuned models at this point. And all those models are solving some very interesting use cases that are going to give you ideas on what to build with AI. And I have picked five of the best applications, or you can say models, that you'll find very, very useful. But before we dive deep into these use cases, we should know that all of these applications are built on top of the Flux model. So Flux.1 is basically a suite of text to image models that was released by Black Forest Labs. And Black Forest Lab is a research community who is building on advanced deep learning generative models for media such as images and videos. These models have defined a new state of the art for image generation, for prompt adherence, for complexity of styles. They have nailed every single thing within text to image synthesis. And they have released three models. So they have Flux1 Pro, Flux1 Dev, Flux1 Schnell. And recently they released their latest model, which is Flux1.1 Pro. Schnell is basically the one which is faster and the quality is going to be slightly lower. When it comes to Dev, Dev is the model which is accessible to everyone. It's open source, hosted on Hugging Face. Schnell is also there, but most of the people use Dev model to fine tune for their use cases. And the Pro model is only available via API. So if you want to test it out, Black Forest Labs, they have their own API. They also offer these models via Replicate and FAL, other API providers. So it's worth spending your time to pick the model. You can head over to artificialanalysis.ai where you'll find detailed reports on how these models are performing, which one is better in terms of quality, price, the generation time, every single thing. So they've compared all these things. So they've benchmarked all these models. You can check that out in order to pick the best one for your use case as well. Now you can see that all of these models are actually hosted on Hugging Face. And to have that skill to build on top of these models, that'll require you to know how to work with Hugging Face. That's where DataCamp comes in. They have a complete skills track, which is called Developing AI Applications. So they have a dedicated course working with Hugging Face, getting started with Hugging Face. So you'll learn how to start working with the Hugging Face library, the Transformer library, uh, how to build pipelines with Hugging Face, how to build pipelines for image and audio. So do check out DataCamp, who is the sponsor of this video as well. So all these courses are going to enable you to start building with AI. All right, so the first use case that we have is Blinkshot.io. Now this is a fun application which allows you to generate images in real time. So within milliseconds, as you're going to type, you'll see the images come to life. And this is built using Together AI API provider and the model that they're using underneath is Flux.1 Dev. Let's try this out as I'm going to type. So you'll see images are going to get changed as I'm going to add more details to the prompt. So uh, Tesla car, let's say, parked in front of a bay. So you'll see as I'm adding details, it'll continue to change and you'll see all the images, all the versions that it has generated so far underneath. So let's add more detail. A Tesla car parked in front of a bay with an eagle flying over it and the car doors are open. So there you go. You'll see that we started off from just the Tesla car and as I added details to my prompt, the images kept on changing. 
Now Blinkshot also has this consistency mode using which you'll be able to preserve the characteristics of uh, all the objects that you see within the first initial few images. So for example, if I say an eagle, now just notice that this eagle currently looks like this. As I'm going to add more details to my prompt, the eagle would not change. So the eagle would remain the same. So an eagle flying over a Tesla car. So let's see. So you'll see that the eagle is similar. It has not changed. Like it has not become black or any other color with a different beak, different eye. All of those characteristics are preserved over a Tesla car, which is parked over the Golden Gate Bridge. And you'll see that the car would also remain the same. All right, let's try out with any other use case. Let's say uh, a scenic blue dusky sky with orange light in the horizon, right? And horizon looking over a pier. Right. So these sort of scenic images, if you want to add elements, you can add those elements using the consistency mode so that those elements remain the same across all the different variations. So great application. You could see that, uh, you know, screensaver applications and uh, all those ambient display uh, applications that we see where the music is changing. And as the music changes, you want the images, the background should also change. So those sort of scenarios, those sort of applications can be easily built using something like Blinkshot.io. The next model that we have is how to draw. This is very interesting and intriguing use case. And it's very nostalgic in the sense that this is inspired from those how to draw booklets that we used to get, where you have initial few lines and suddenly the whole image or the picture of that particular object appears. So all I have to do here is specify what I want and it'll basically give me an incremental drawing of that particular object that I wanted. So here they've given some example. So this is, for example, a uh, image of a dolphin and this how to draw. If you look at the prompt here, how to draw is the keyword that triggers the generation of the image in this particular style. And in order to try this, this is created by Glyph. So in order to try this, you can just head over to their website and you can specify what you want. For example, I created a bunch of these examples here and uh, for example, the prompt. I wanted to test if it could capture the text as well. So it would kind of become like a postcard. So I'll be able to create very nostalgic sort of postcards using this model. So I asked, I want a rose with this text, I heart you written below and it created this. So I can tell stories using these sort of images. I can see that, you know, when it is incremental, so I can talk about educational content. I can use it in motion based media to make my videos more appealing. So it has like multiple applications. And this again is going to get uh, really viral if somebody uses it in the right manner. Very, very cool use case that is again built on top of Flux. The next model that we have is for logo design. So a low rank adaptation for logo design, obviously, which is built and trained on Flux One Dev. So this is very, very cool. I tried it out for a number of logos and it has given me a bunch of really good options to choose from. They've hosted it on Hugging Face. So you can just simply specify what you want in this input 
and you can click on compute hit enter to generate the image they've specified that the model uses a bunch of trigger words so you need to specify logo minimalist all these keywords and add it in front of your prompt and further then you know specify what you want so the usage suggestions that they have given dual combination for example most of the logos are combination of like two or three things so here they have specified that if it is like cat and coffee i tried it out with lime and mic so these sort of combinations you should try then font combination they've given us some examples of a book with the word m or the fingerprint pattern which consists of the letters hp or text below the graphics so most of the logos would want uh, that there should be the name of the company uh, written below the graphic itself so those sort of text below graphic type of details you need to add in your prompt itself when i tried it out i wanted it to create a logo for a company called pod limes where i have a mic and two limes so if you look at this the prompt that i provided here in this particular image so if you look at the prompt i had a mic breaking a lemon into two with the text pod limes below it so that was the text that i captured and similarly i created a bunch of these this was a simple so let's try it out with another combination let's say logo minimalist and uh, these are the two keywords that i have added now i can specify what i want so let's say i want uh, strawberry and chocolate okay that's it generate so this will take a few seconds and it'll give me a combination of strawberry and chocolate so you can see how minimalistic logo with chocolate and strawberry kind of combined together so these are basically strawberries that are dipped uh, in chocolate so this is a good combination they have not like given chocolate separately strawberry separately uh, so a good amalgamation here now if i want to write something below it this time what i'm doing is strawberry and chocolate with text choco strawberry below it okay so this is what i am adding on top of the logo that it has created for us so the text should also appear now all right so you can see that this time they have added choco strawberry so i think uh, did i make any mistake okay so it has got the spelling incorrect here okay choose strawberry so the text has not quite come correctly here let me try to add something simpler here okay so let's say uh simply strawberry if i simply add strawberry will it be able to capture that all right with the simpler text you can see that it worked correctly with a very minimalistic logo with logo design i think this is the application and for your next endeavor you should definitely give this uh, a try it's an application that will give logo designers a run for their money the next model that we have is simple vector flux now this is again a low rank adaptation of flux one dev to create vector style images so if you have created animations or if you have ever written a blog post tutorial you must have struggled to get clean vector style images to explain those topics i myself have struggled a lot in order to get such creative examples and this model comes in very very handy in order to generate those sort of images so here i tried it out with a couple of examples the trigger keyword that we have here is vector comma and then whatever you want so here i specified i want a student playing chess so this was the image that it generated for me i can change this so let's say a student solving a math problem on a paper let's compute this it'll take like 20 25 seconds it is hosted on hugging faces uh, inference api and uh, you can see that this simple vector flux model was trained on curated data set of 50 synthetic images they're currently working on this they're improving this but i can totally see the potential of a model like this which will help content creation a lot 
and in the coming days you'll see many comics being designed using models like these and uh, Instagram reels, shorts, uh, simple uh, explanatory videos that explains you concepts about, uh, let's say, finance or uh, physics, algebra, all such things will become very, very easy. So you'll see, just look at this image, how easy it is to get a graphic based on whatever you're writing. Amazing. Really, really useful. Okay, for the last, has a very vibrant and cool use case from the world of fashion or you could say graffiti or maybe both. So this is half illustration to create images which contains both elements, photographic elements as well as illustrative elements. So if you are creating Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts and you want some sort of graffiti based elements in it which are vibrant, appealing and uh, where elements are kind of popping out of the screen itself, this is the model to create such uh, graphics. And how does it work? This is again built on top of Flux itself. So to try this out, there is a key phrase here that you have to start the prompt with. It's called in the style of TOK. So here you can see it would help if you use in the style of TOK for better style preservation. And after this, you specify the complete prompt. The only thing is that you have to be very, very specific in terms of defining the elements that you want in this graphic. So if you look at the prompts that they have provided, the examples here, uh, I personally had to use large language model. I use Claude to create the prompt for this. So the graphic that I've created here, I just copied one of these, gave it to Claude, asked it to write an alternate prompt uh, with some ideas. And in the style of TOK, I wanted to capture a dynamic editorial photo of a figure striking a dramatic action pose. The subject wears mirrored sunglasses and a creative design bucket hat. They are positioned in a Tokyo setting, standing on a basketball court, surrounded by imposing marble structures and surreal white purple trees. So every single element detail has to be captured and then this would all come together with some illustrative elements and the photographic element of the person of the model. And you can use it to create posters, to create YouTube videos, to explain things, to move things around. And this would actually make your advertisement or uh, whatever you want to create very, very appealing. And this again, as I said, Flux Dev 1, uh, low rank adaptation, which is fine tuned on Replicate. And this is a very, very funky model to play around with. Do give this a try, you'll, you'll love it. All right, that's it. I hope you found this useful. You got some ideas on what is possible now with the such uh, interesting use cases and interesting models that are out there. And if you want to fine tune your model, you should definitely check out Flux One Dev and platforms like Replicate and Hugging Face to fine tune your models. Further, I would say that if you need like more explanation, if you want to learn how to build on top of these things, check out uh, the link to the data camp skills track uh, below the like button here. And uh, if you want me to create videos on image to image models, video models, do let me know in the comment section. I'll cover some very, very interesting use cases. There are applications like Photo AI, uh, there are like Adobe Firefly. All of these applications are leveraging this technology. They are coming up with their own models but the open source models with the text to image use case are already you know way beyond the proprietary models so i would say that you can definitely build something here and uh, if you want me to cover use cases do let me know in the comment section and i'll get down to it and create some really interesting content for you <laughs>